2018. Hello and a warm welcome to a brand new episode of CNBC TV 18 Weekender. On the show today, we've travelled 620 kilometres from Chennai to this small town called Tenkasi in Tamil Nadu. Now, if you're wondering why that name sounds so familiar, it's probably because you've heard of it as SaaS firm Zoho Corp's big technology hub outside of its global headquarters in Chennai. For the longest time, the company's co-founder and CEO, Sridhar Vembu, has spoken at length about building his tech firm on the bedrock of rural India. Today, Zoho has offices in towns like Madurai, Coimbatore, Tirunelveli and Tiruchirappalli. However, in many ways, it's right here in Tenkasi where that story first began. Today, we get to spend a weekend with Sridhar as we also get a ringside view of what it's like to run a tech firm next door to the Western Ghats. So what are you waiting for? Join me for the ride. Vembo, great to have you with us here on CNBC TV 18 Weekender and I must say it is quite the experience to come to your side of town. We've travelled all the way from Chennai to what can only be described as, I don't even think a tier 3 city, but what is truly the heart of rural Tamil Nadu, so to speak. It's a tier 1 village. It's a tier 1 village. <laughs> That's a great way Welcome. of putting it. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Great to be here. And on Weekender itself, uh, you know, I have to ask you, you have spoken a great length and we've spoken as well on numerous occasions about your vision to actually build a tech company out of a tier 3 town, tier 2 towns, even rural India, so to speak. Is Tenkasi and Zoho taking form and shape here in Tenkasi, your second largest center, I believe, outside yes. of Chennai. Oh. Oh. Is that an embodiment of this vision that you have so passionately spoken of over the years? Yeah. Now we are at almost approaching a thousand people mark, mm -hmm. 750 and another maybe a couple of hundred will be joining soon in the next few months. Mm -hmm. And we're building a bigger center in Tenkasi, which is about 25 kilometers from here. Mm -hmm. That's in Matalampari. Mm -hmm. We are in a very remote village, I think. that's why I call it tier one village. Right. This is a real proper panchayat here. This is my home and welcome home first. And uh, this is definitely an adventure, right? So mm -hmm. it's, uh, big adventure and we have had this office for 11 years now and we are reaching that thousand people mark which tells you that that whole experiment is working right in building software out of here software mm -hmm. products that can compete in the global market mm -hmm. that experiment is working mm -hmm. and it's very interesting to see this because even as we speak you are currently overseeing the continued transition so to speak of moving away from big cities yeah. to small towns a furtherance or an expansion of that hub and spoke model that we keep speaking about so much. Uh, so tell me about the expansion that you have right now. I believe you're moving to newer tier two, tier three yeah. towns. What's the expansion plan at Zoho like? So we have now uh, hubs coming up in Tunnel Valley, Taruvai and uh, Madurai, Kapalur. Mm -hmm. And we have one near Palladam in Coimbatore mm -hmm. district. Between Coimbatore and Tirupur, there's a, a hub coming up. It's it's already has about 150 people working there, mm -hmm. one coming near Tirichi. Mm -hmm. So all these are already, uh, within the next two, three months, they will all be operational. Mm -hmm. And then once those hubs take root, we'll put small small spokes around it. Right. So that's where we are heading in the next uh, right. year or two. And already about 2,000 people are working from these smaller centers. Uh -huh. And the next three to five years, 50% of our headcount will be in these places. Wow. That's the goal, yeah. That brings me to the most pertinent question when it comes to hiring from small towns. I know it's something that you passionately speak about, but when it comes to the talent question, Sridhar, do you feel that what you get here is ready to actually go about becoming, um, you know, a crucial component of the IT workforce? In fact, it's not just we are able to retain the talent, we're able to bring back some of the talent that left. Right. That has started happening. Now see, you are uh, living standards have gone up everywhere. Mm -hmm. The roads are better, at least still the main roads. Mm -hmm. And then the interior small villages, there's a challenge, but most of the main roads are good now. Mm -hmm. 
and your amenities are good, mm -hmm. fiber optics is everywhere. Mm -hmm. If you go to Tenkasi town, which is about 30 kilometers from here, right. you have shopping malls, you have pizza, you have anything, Chinese food, right. you name it. So <laughs> Globalization like, coming to rural Exactly, <laughs> yeah, globalization is coming everywhere. Yeah. You know, I have to ask you, not only do you talk about this whole vision of you know, bringing tech to rural India, rural Tamil Nadu, you're even expanding in Uttar Pradesh even as we speak, uh, but you also look and walk the talk when it comes to you know, taking rural India forward. Um, I, when you moved from the US to India and then you know, made sure that this was your home where you would, of course, find a place and a dwelling, uh, was becoming more rural part of uh, the plan that you embarked on? I know for a fact that even when I meet you in the city, a hasty and shirt is probably part of your everyday wardrobe. Yeah. It is, and I, I like to work from here. It's, it's a good life. I mean, I say, I don't want people thinking somehow rural life is a sacrifice life. Right. It's a good life. It, it is a good life with naturally less consumption, right. naturally less energy use, all of it. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you have to intentionally consume less, intentionally use less energy. Mm -hmm. And in, you now you get naturally more walk. Mm -hmm and more fresh air, all of that by natural, no? by right. just being here. Absolutely. So a lot of that is good quality of life, mm -hmm. they say. And you get time to think. I, I, I know. Somehow removing yourself uh, gives you a perspective. Mm -hmm. like I can think calmly about what, how are we going to uh, you know, handle the AI technology or fresh challenges arising from the global like, brewing financial Absolutely. crisis, all of this. You sit here, you think calmer, you know, yeah. you don't get carried away. And I'm glad that you have had time to think about all that in Tenkasi because we will of course come to those questions in just a bit. But I have to ask you, what is typically a day like for you here at Tenkasi? It's not exactly, um, it's, not, it's, it's not Zoho's conical building in Chennai where you have the majority of your tech talent sitting and working out of. It's a nice small town, you belong to the place. Uh, what does Sridhar Vembu do on any given weekend here in Tenkasi? Um, my weekends are similar to weekdays, but usually on weekends I don't have very many meetings. Mm -hmm. I try to keep a day or two off of that and I have time to think, I read something mm -hmm. and then I might go to a temple or some temple festival might be. Right. I get invited to a lot of the, the equivalent of the party in the city is like a temple festival here. Right, okay. So that's what I go to. What are some of the books that you're currently catching up and with? And I'm reading some, you No, know, there's a book on the body-mind connection. Okay. That how, you know, things like pain, back pain, all of that is coming from the mind and it's actually written by a back surgeon. Okay. So that's the interesting part. Uh -huh. It's a book by Dr. Sarno, mm -hmm. like John Sarno, MD. And he, is a, he was a back surgeon himself. He believes most of the back pain is coming from mind, not right. from the back. Okay. Which is a very shocking thing for a surgeon to say that. Absolutely. And you also, I believe, ride around your electric auto. Um, uh, teaching is something that you took to as well during the lockdown, uh, uh, another passion that you hold so close to your heart. Uh, do you manage to make time for these pastimes I, as well? Definitely, I go around in my auto all the time. Teaching, I don't get to do as much, but I have a, now I try to make a once a week sort of a interaction with the kids. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll talk about some topic that I'm interested in and that they, I believe they should know. Mm -hmm. So we try to do that about once a week, mm -hmm. but not always because I get tied up in meetings, all that. Right. The school is running quite well, now mm -hmm. about uh, 150 kids and growing. Mm -hmm. so. So that's something that's keeping you occupied yeah. around the clock. You know, but even as you go about this journey of building tech talent from rural Tamil Nadu or rural India, so to speak, um, what do you think would be some of the key challenges that you would have to contend with at this time and place? Uh, you know, even as we speak, we're in the midst of a global meltdown when it comes to information technology itself. Um, tech isn't doing well. And I'm almost curious how when the talk is about laying off and cutting down redundancies, which is what every founder speaks of these days. Not everyone's calling it a layoff, in fact. We're not hiring that many new right now, mm -hmm. partly because, of course, growth has slowed considerably. Mm -hmm. We're still growing, but growth rates have come down, mm -hmm. like from 30 plus percent to now like 12, 13, 15 percent. That, that's the range now. Still growing, but you know, it's, I, as I say, 10 percent is better than zero percent. Yeah. But it has come a big come down from a 30 percent days, 30, 35 percent days. And I do expect these conditions to continue. I don't believe yes. that uh, we, we are out of the woods mm -hmm. yet and we still have some way to go on this. Mm -hmm. And the global economic situation is still pretty dire in many ways. Mm -hmm. And so, but what I have ensured is that uh, we have said that we will not resort to layoffs. Mm -hmm. We want to take that out of our, mm -hmm. the worry list for our employees. There's so many things to worry about. Mm -hmm. At least we're not going to do a layoff. Mm -hmm. 
In other words, if they got used to funding their losses with VC money, then VCs get to call the shots. They'll yeah. say, we will no longer fund your losses, cut down your bond rate, mm -hmm. or become profitable. Mm -hmm. Then you have no option because your revenue is not growing that much. Mm -hmm. How do you become profitable? Mm -hmm. You have to cut your cost. Mm -hmm. The biggest cost is people. Right. But we were running a profitable operation. So for us, the question is, do we want to take a reduction in profit? I would gladly reduce my profit rate. I will even go to, you know, if necessary, we'll go to some loss in a downturn. Mm -hmm. See, a, a loss is supposed to be in a deep depth of the downturn. Some company could lose money for a couple of quarters if they had good cash reserves. Mm -hmm. The loss is not supposed to be during the bubble. Mm -hmm. Companies were losing hundreds of millions on a regular course. Mm -hmm. That's not normal. Mm -hmm. That's what really happened. Absolutely. So ours is a profit-making company. Yes. We are willing to suffer through some profit reduction, mm -hmm. maybe even a mild loss at some point, if, if that's what the world awaits. Mm -hmm. But we don't have to. We can always deploy our people to new products we have to do, new projects. Right. So. With that, we'll slip into a really short break. But on the other side, we'll quiz Sridhar Vembo on what he thinks about artificial intelligence, investments in this field, and what does it hold really for the company itself. Keep watching CNBC TV 18 Weekender.